Hello and welcome back to SciTi Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a very useful basic DIY voltmeter with using just a few simple components. Let's get started. <laughs> And these are the items that you're going to need to make for this project. And the items you're going to need is this digital voltmeter, some chopsticks, electrical tape, shrink tubing, 3 volt button cell battery, 3 volt button cell battery holder, a slide switch, some thick copper wire for electrodes, and a cardboard cylinder. Now let's go ahead and assemble this project. First, I'm going to solder the center pin of the slide switch to the positive of the button cell battery holder. Next, I'm going to take my voltmeter and place it inside of this cardboard. I'm going to place it right about here. So I'm going to flip it over and trace it so that way I know where to cut. There we go, just like that. Now I'm going to take my Zacto knife and cut out the rectangle to be able to place the voltmeter inside of. Next, I'm going to take my voltmeter, place some hot glue on both ends of the voltmeter, push it in just like that, more hot glue around the voltmeter to hold it into place better, leave the wire sticking out like that, take the positive wire and solder it to the switch, and it should look just like that. Next, take the negative wire and solder it to the negative terminal of the button cell battery holder, and there, it should look just like that. Now I'm going to take some measurements and calculate about here is where I want to cut the cardboard. Next I'll take the signal wire, which is the white wire, and slide it through the opposite end. There, and it should look just like this. Next I'm going to take this blue wire, which will represent negative, solder it to the negative terminal of the button cell battery holder, just like that. Slide it through the opposite end of the cardboard just like that. Put some hot glue on the leads to keep it insulated. Take the battery holder and place it on the side of the cardboard just like that. Trace the switch so that way I can cut the cardboard to place the switch in better. There we go, just like that. Cut off some of the cardboard so the switch can be put into place. And there we go, take the switch and slide it through just like that. Put some hot glue on both ends of the switch to glue it into place. And there we go, it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take some more hot glue and put it next to the button cell battery holder. So that way I can glue it into place better, just like this. There we go, perfect. Take my 3 volt button cell battery, place it in, Turn on the switch, and there, the circuit works. Next, I'm going to take my cardboard, bend it just like this, so that way I can have two crease marks. The reason for that is so that way I can take the Zacto knife and make a hole where the crease marks are, so that way I can slide the wires through, just like this. There we go, and it should look just like that. Repeat the same process on the opposite end. And there we go, it should look just like this. Cut off the excess to make it look more even. Next I'm going to take some hot glue and place it inside of the cardboard, pinch it together so that way it looks a little bit nicer, and it should look just like this. Next it's time to make the probe, and I'm going to take my chopsticks and cut them to size. As you can see the chopsticks are too long and I'm just holding the chopstick just like this to where I feel comfortable and I'm going to cut it right about here where I feel like it's the right size for me. Cut it off just like that. 
make them both even. Next, I'm going to take my white signal wire, which will be the positive of the probe, and solder some extra wire to it. Take some shrink tubing to shrink it together to keep it insulated. There we go, just like that. Next, I'm going to solder tin these copper pieces, which will be the ends of my probes. And solder tinning them will make the wire solder to it easier, just like this. Take the negative wire, solder it into place, positive wire, solder it into place, and there we go, it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take my shrink tubing and shrink tube these probes, just like this, so that way they can stay insulated and to make it look a little bit nicer. And there we go, it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take my pocket knife and whittle this chopstick so that way I can be able to connect the probes better. Whittle away some of the wood to shape it so that way I can fit the probe in just like that. Because of the shape of the probe, will fit on the piece of chopstick just like that. Next, I'm going to take some shrink tubing and place it over the probe wire and chopstick just like this so that way I can be able to hold the two together. Shrink it, and there, it's held together just like that. Take some more shrink tubing, and I'm using the red one because it represents positive. Repeat the same process, so that way it holds the wire down just like that. And there, your positive probe is now complete. Next, repeat the same process with the negative probe. I'm going to use some electrical tape to wrap around the negative probe. The reason why I'm using electrical tape is because I only have black electrical tape. If I had red electrical tape, I'd use that too, but I don't have it. And there, it should look just like this. Your device is now complete. And now it's time to test it out. I'm going to take my button cell battery, place it in, turn on the switch, and there, it works. Now let's see if this 9 volt battery says 9 volts. And it does. Good. Now I'm going to take this 9 volt battery that I took apart and see if this works. Oh, it doesn't work. So when it's reverse polarity, it doesn't do anything. So I'm going to turn it over and test it again. Ah, as you can see, it's 6.7 volts. Perfect. Now let's go test this 1.5 volt battery. Oh, I see, it's 1.1 volts. This is a dead battery. My next test is take my alligator clips, my lab bench power supply, connect to the probe, and I wanna see how many volts this device can handle. My lab bench power supply can supply 24 volts. Let's see if it says 24 volts on here. And as you can see, as I turn the knob, it's working. And there we go, 23.9 volts. Perfect. Final test, let's go ahead and take the positive probe and touch the positive of the battery of its own device and see what it reads. Interesting, it says 2.6 volts. Well, that's very useful to have in case you're wondering if your battery is getting low on your own device, you can check it by doing this. And there you have it. Now you know how to make your own basic DIY voltmeter with using just a few simple components. And there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTi Tech. I hope you learned something new and don't forget to like and subscribe and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTi Tech videos. Till the next tech. Goodbye.